Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and macOS Sonoma 14.1 is out to the public. macOS 14.1 released today along with many other updates with iOS 17.1, watchOS 10.1 and more, and is available on all macOS 14 supported devices, from the iMac 2019 and later to the Mac Mini 2018 and later, Mac Studio and much more. This particular update installed at 760.5 megabytes, that's on my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, and should be around that size if you're updating from maybe the previous beta or maybe the previous version. It depends on what you're upgrading from. And if we go ahead and take a look at the build number, we'll go to the Apple, then about this Mac. If we close this window, then we'll click on macOS Sonoma, you'll see the build number is 23B74. In fact, this is a new build compared to the previous RC release. So if you're a beta tester or developer, go ahead and go to your settings and turn off the beta testing updates, and then you'll get this update and be able to install it. You'll have a new build as well. Now, as far as what's new, let's go ahead and close this. The first thing they've updated has to do with music. Now they updated music on iOS 17.1, and we get similar updates here. So we'll wait for it to open. And within music, if maybe we go into an album here, we'll just click on this one, maybe scroll down. And if we click on the three dots here, we can now favorite a song. And if we favorite that song, we can favorite a song, a playlist, an album, and it will actually show up under playlists under favorites. So you'll see this little star here as this is already favorited. So we have it here, favorite it, and then you can unfavorite it as well. However, it does not seem to work 100% all the time. So you'll see it disappeared. It's a little bit slow, but it is a new feature. They've added it with iOS 17 as well. If we go to our playlists here, in the upper right, we have a menu and under the menu, we have only favorited now. So we can see all of our favorited songs and playlists where we have different songs here. And they do take a little bit to update and sync across different devices. So you can actually adjust the album artwork on an iPhone, but it's not as easy to do here. So you actually can filter the playlists and display them in your library. Now let's go ahead and close music. Now, if we go into our settings, they've updated this as well, where if we go in here, we go under general, then we go to coverage, give it a moment to load under coverage. We can see our warranty status. So we have this device here, the 16 inch MacBook pro M1 max, but we've got other devices as well that could be covered. If we click on this, you'll see the overall coverage here. We can manage the plan and we can also get support and get the details of the coverage here as well. So that's been added to Mac OS. We've had it on iOS for a while, but they finally brought it here. Now, if we go into messages, they've updated this as well with a couple nice changes and within messages, if maybe I want to reply to a message, if I right click or option click before we actually had to click tap back to get the same tap back controls. So if we click on tap back, we can have the same controls, but now we can just right click or option click and give a thumbs up that way. So it's a little bit quicker to do this time around. I'm not sure why they still have the tap back option here. But that's been updated in this version. If we close that, go back into system settings and we go down to privacy. So under privacy and security, then we go to location services, then scroll all the way to the bottom, go to system services details under system services details. You'll see, we have a bunch of options here. If you have some of these disabled with significant locations in particular, and maybe you go to restart your Mac, sometimes they would automatically re-enable themselves. That's been fixed in this update and Apple also fixed this in iOS 17.1 as well. Apple's also fixed an issue where sometimes if you're using an external drive that's encrypted, it wouldn't show up properly. You try and connect it, it wouldn't show. Now it will and they fixed it so it will mount properly to the OS. There's also quite a few security updates in this version. So let's go ahead to that site and within Apple's security release website, if we scroll down, you can see all of the different things released today. If we go to Mac OS Sonoma 14.1, you'll see there's quite a few things available such as app support, app sandbox, contacts, emoji. And this one's a little odd where we have emoji where an attacker may be able to execute arbitrary code as root from the lock screen. The issue was addressed by restricting options offered on a locked device. So they're actually going after emoji now you'll see find my was updated as well as many other things with the kernel login window mail drafts maps and much more photos even siri and safari so that makes me think you definitely should update to mac os 14.1 just for the security updates as it seems to patch an awful lot of issues here so definitely i would suggest it 
I really haven't had any issues running it on my own Macs. I haven't had issues with Final Cut Pro and it seems to be running as you would expect. So I really don't have any reservations as far as running Mac OS Sonoma right now with 14.1 or even if you were on the original version, I think now is a safe time to upgrade. Just make sure that if you have specific plugins that they work. Otherwise, I really don't see any issues at this point. Apple also has an upcoming event in just a few days. It's actually a Mac focused event. If we click on it here, you'll see that the Apple actually changes into the finder icon. So the finder face shows up that we have down here and you'll see the event is on October 30th at 5 p.m. Pacific time or 8 p.m. Eastern time. I think this is the latest Apple event I've ever seen, at least maybe in many years, and it should focus on Macs, hopefully M3 Macs, and maybe a few surprises here and there. So I have a full video covering things there of what to expect and more. Now, if we go to our calendar, Mac OS 14.2, along with iOS 17.2 betas should probably be out within a couple days or maybe next week after the Apple event. That's usually what would happen. We'll get some new beta updates. So we could see those within a day or possibly next week where we move on to the next versions and and hopefully get that journal app on iOS 17.1 as well. Now, as far as overall performance, well, I did mention before that this update seems to be working fine with Final Cut Pro and different features throughout. I really haven't noticed many bugs or issues, maybe a few hangups here and there in Final Cut Pro, but that seems to be caused by some plugins I'm using. Otherwise, I really haven't noticed any changes or difference there. As far as battery life, well, I typically don't use them off of power. As you can see here, I'm at hundred percent. This is that 16 inch MacBook, and it's plugged into a studio display. So if we scroll down, we go to battery. We'll just check the battery health. Since I've used this since new, you'll see it says normal. That's something I would love to see them add to iOS where it says normal. And then if you want more detail, maybe show the percentage, but we're down to 93%. I have it managing itself. And again, it's a couple of years old at this point, so it should be down about 90% or so. And of course we could replace the battery if we need to, but at this point it's good to go. And I typically use it plugged in battery life. I haven't used it off the charger much, but you'll see where it discharges it a little bit just to allow it to use the battery some and then charges it back up. But overall, I really haven't heard any complaints as far as battery life with this. So that's everything with Mac OS 14.1 Sonoma, just a few updates, some bug fixes and more. Let me know what you think of those features in music. And hopefully this becomes much more stable this year. I would love to see an update like that, such as snow leopard or something to really refine the updates overall. If you've found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do at least the iOS version. So you can use it on your iPhone. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.